you're new to my channel, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Now let's get into today's video. So today what we're going to be working on in Amp Creator Lore is a little mechanic that I thought I would end up doing for this particular series. I wanted to get uh, grass to, like tall grass, to actually grow on top of grass over time. Now this is something that Minecraft hasn't actually done yet, and I would actually wouldn't mind it to be like a feature. Um, though I can understand that it would probably need a game rule or something like that in order to make it not like overpowering and because it does prevent the um, blocks from being like being able to be actually placed and stuff but um, like for vanilla wise it would probably not be that good but if it was if there was like a game rule or something like that to disable it it would actually be a really cool feature to actually have in the base game uh, you can maybe grow flowers and stuff over time and things like that but um, my main focus for today is just like getting the actual tall grass to grow and have a percent to actually grow it with now Currently, what I'm working on is just setting up the MBT uh, so the grass actually uses MBT so we can uh, use variables and delay the amount of time that it takes to actually grow the grass. So it will basically grow randomly, still like how grass grows, so we keep the mechanics the same, but we also needed to make sure that the... Um, it doesn't like grow too quickly so basically that's what I'm doing with the global variables I'm just calling it a delay and I'm going to be setting this to a low value for testing wise and then I'll probably uh, move the number up to like 8 uh, so it will take a little bit longer to actually grow now we could adjust this uh, through game rules as well so people can adjust the speed how long the grass takes to grow and stuff uh, that would be a option to do. Um, I'm not sure how that will actually affect the rendering distance and stuff. It might be a little bit different because the updates for the blocks only happen within range of a player so um, I'm not sure if that would actually have like any huge effect on you know the delay or anything. It's not really like a um, regular timer uh, per se but you know it might help a little bit. Um, so yeah, basically what I'm setting up right now is a area test, so I can basically test uh, when this timer becomes to zero, what we can test for is if there is the same type of block, like the grass block uh, that we have, and we're going to see if there is a block above it that is the grass and the tall grass, and then if that's true, then what we'll end up doing is we'll be adding this to account uh, value that will determine how many are in this particular area. And now we want this to run all the way through, so we're going to be testing for every um, position in this 5x5x5 five by five by five area. So 5x5 five five around the entire cube of this one block will be basically calculated and tests how many grass blocks or tall grass there will be in that particular area and then later on in the script what I will end up doing is making it so if it's a certain amount of that tall grass uh, then what we can do is we can either tell it to generate more or just continue to reset the timer until the next iteration so basically that would be whenever the um, that variable that we have that two on uh, will be like a next cycle of it so it would have to randomize randomly be selected two or more times in order to actually get it. So in this case, I'm just setting up the count and then I needed the position for each one of these um, variables for the offset. So we could basically uh, test for each position and then I needed to set up the local variables for that and make sure that the offset for each variable is um, negative two. So when I'm actually uh, using the increase um, method for increasing the variable, I can basically just keep it at that low range. And then I wanted to also just basically set up the actual um, 
local variables. Now, I was actually wondering, because you have to reset it, right? And I'm going, okay, we probably don't need the Z coordinates because that's already going to be resetting, where it's not like we have to detest for it and then cancel out of the procedure. So I'm pretty sure this will work just fine uh, the way that I have it set up. And I'm pretty sure it works. I didn't notice any issues with it, so it seemed to do the proper thing for the testing and everything like that. So um, I'll probably end up leaving it like this. It's just less um, things being done overall when compared to resetting the, um, the Z coordinates on the X value or the Y value as well. So um, the next thing that I needed to do was test if the block above the uh, grass block that we're running this procedure from is error or the, at least the tag that we have for error. So I wanted to make sure that um, we could actually test for that. And one of the other things that I needed to do was set up a uh, random uh, block for determining what kind of grass block we're going to actually be assigning to this block. So for example, we'll have a random number generate between one and three, and then we can spawn our custom grass directly onto this. And um, what I ended up doing here was uh, basically adding a condition if the um, value of the counter is basically less than the amount that I want to generate. Now, the I believe the higher the number, the more grass will have a prior probability of generating. So basically anything under uh, or above 12, it won't uh, generate any grass. So that's at least the theory that I, I was working on and I, I was had to calculate it, but when I tested it in game, it was working. So that's basically what I wanted to do. And I just wanted to make sure that the grass was growing on the block above, but we already tested for if the block above is error. So that will basically tell the game that all this needs to run as long as there's an error block above. And this should allow a little bit more um, performance because we're not testing it for every block, only the block that is that has an error directly above it. So once I've done that, I needed to tweak a few things. I need to go into the, um, I believe it was the tags, and I needed to create a couple tags for the new mechanics. And I was just going to call them uh, the grass block and um, basically this one is for the the actual grass blocks themselves. I was going to add dirt, but I decided to just remove the dirt for now. I, I don't know if we really need dirt. It doesn't make sense to grow tall grass on dirt, really. So I just kind of left it with the, uh, the grass block. If we had more variations to the grass block, we can expand on that if we want to but and then I needed one for the actual tall grass so basically just copying the variables from here and placing them in there and then it's both under our mod namespace so we can test that and I needed to save the procedure and then move it all the way back because I didn't save it in the right place and then I needed to also add support for the update tick so we moved stuff from around for the update tick and one controls the uh, grass growth which is that procedure here and the other one is for our um, tall grass growth so the stuff that happens on top of the block not the block turning into a grass block around the block so uh, basically this will be a little bit different mechanics and yeah I just had to tweak a little bit of the code and test it in game and Immediately, this basically happened really quickly uh, because I didn't, um, I had the game tick rate uh, pretty high. Uh, so basically, it was generating all the grass uh, all over quite quickly and stuff like that. One of the things that I noticed was there was no support for biomes really with this particular mechanic. So I just wanted to see if it was actually generating a percent. And it looks like it's actually generating the percent of 12 percent for or if there was 12 then it will leave some spots between it's about half of the uh space in planes now that seems pretty reasonable in the planes biome but not so much in the forest biome and you know things like desert and stuff like that might be even i don't know less 
appropriate for the actual biome and stuff like that. Now I just wanted to kind of mine out this, just see how long it takes to for the grass to grow back with this two setting, and then we might adjust the the time based on that. So it looks like some of these are already growing back. So um, we probably need to delay this about maybe to eight for each block. Now you have to remember it's only for the rendering distance that the player is in. So for example, if we're um, not here, uh, if we're like further away, then this area won't actually generate because it's not in player rendering distance. So I'm not sure how far this actually goes, but there is a specific cap on the distance that grass will grow or update block updates will happen. So I'm not entirely sure on the mechanics on that, but it's not the full rendering distance. Like there's a certain range between it the player and the full like where all those uh the fog starts of the rendering distance and stuff like that so there there is a little bit of a difference between that particular thing where i think the tick updates actually happen all around or i'm not sure if that's the case actually <laughs> um i don't i know that they won't generate um what do you call it uh for blocks that were generated naturally like this so that's why i'm using the random tick update but um in some cases you know it would be good for machines and stuff like that but i don't know if they're it's affected by the range or anything like that anyhow it seems to be growing uh pretty fairly uh at a fair speed but you know lowering that amount for the time might be a really good idea just so it's easier to build so the next thing that i worked on was basically just setting the uh, time there a little bit higher and then we can basically go ahead so I set it to 8 and then one of the other things that I wanted to do was basically test and then I tested it just to make sure that it was working and then I started adding support for biomes so basically there will be how this will work uh, how I'll implement it is when it's in one of our custom biomes, then it will be categorized into three groups. So the first one is going to be more like plains, things with a lot of dense grass. The second one will be for things like forests. And the third one, or any other basic biome. And then the third one will be for um, uh, desolate biomes, like deserts, things like that. You know, if there's, you still want grass growth overall, but you might not want as dense grass growth because that wouldn't really make sense. So in some cases you might have that like dense grass, grass growth like savannas and stuff, but um, like that's considered a desert biome, but um, having the ability to actually control this between this range. And also I added support to make sure that the dimension um, it was it would work outside of the dimension as well so if someone uses silk touch to get the item then it will work in other uh, dimensions so I just made a uh, fallback for the actual script so it would test if it was in a specific dimension first and then if it wasn't in the my own dimension then it would basically have a default value that would allow support for other um, other mods and stuff like that for their dimensions as well as the vanilla Minecraft dimensions as well. So that was really important for me to add, uh, even though that I don't really have a idea what I'm going to be doing to get out of this dimension yet. Um, at the moment, we're not using any form of teleport or portal system. So basically, once you're in here, you're permanently in here at the moment. So we still need to figure out a way to get the players out um, based on, you know, some sort of criteria, I would think. Um, and maybe have it so once they've completed that particular criteria, they can go between the worlds quite easily. I think that might be a valid option for actually setting up. So this is basically the three tier system that I'm working on. And then I wanted to um, just set up those tags quickly. So I needed biome tags for each one of them. And I'm just gonna copy the name and then paste that in here so we can get the exact values. And I'm just gonna call it uh, biome tag. And then we can go ahead and tweak this a little bit, set it under mod namespace, and then select our planes biomes for this one. 
And then the other one uh, is our medium one. So I'm gonna copy the registry part that I called for that, paste that in here. And then we can go ahead and add the biome take part again and then clean that up a little bit and add the divider. And then we can go ahead and put it under our mod namespace and select the two forest biomes. And I'm going to create the third one, even though that there isn't any biomes at the moment for this particular um, particular one yet, but it still should be added just so it's a little bit easier for us to add later on when we get to desert biomes and stuff like that. Now, uh, this one's a little bit different, so I needed to make sure everything was set up on our mod namespace, and we're not gonna actually add any biomes to this particular group. So going back to our procedure, all those tags are now set up. We just need to categorize it into a dimension. So we need to figure out uh, how we're going to do that. Um, now there's a couple different blocks for getting the dimension ID and um, had to find where the actual dimension type was. It used to say, um, what was it? The I think surface or something like that. So it took me a little while. I think it was this block here that I needed. So I selected that one and then I added support for our our dimension. So I needed to add a and statement and an or statement just to calculate the two of them. And then I could basically do that. And then I noticed it added a dimension um, trigger or pardon me, a dependency on the side there. So I swapped it out for the world version uh, just so we could still use it in the update tick. Now, if we use the other version, the dependency was wouldn't work with the up block update tick. So we needed to make sure that it actually was supported. So I was just setting this up for the other biomes now. So basically if it's not in this particular biome, then I wanted it to run a default of, I believe, eight or something like that or six whatever version was in the middle so i cleaned out the area and i basically just let it run for a little bit as i was cleaning it out some of the grass spawned back but i was able to kind of harvest out all the grass around here and you can kind of see it's uh slowly coming in but it's not as fast as it was for sure and um the one thing about this system is it won't actually generate or like get removed uh, when the game like reloads the chunk. So once these grass blocks are placed, they're permanently there until the player uh, harvests them. Now this will tie in with our mechanics for the hay, uh, which will allow re renewable resource, which uh, will be a lot better over time and stuff. We will be able to feed animals that we create and stuff like that in the future. So that's really important for the grass growth part and that's why I created it and I thought it would be a really cool mechanic to actually give it a try and see if we could get something working. So um, yeah, outside of that, I'm pretty impressed with how the mechanics turned out. I have no complaints. It seems to be pretty stable. Uh, we still need to fix the grass dropping wheat seeds. We should probably do like biome seeds or something like that in the future, but I don't know. We'll figure something out in the next update or, or next next week's video. Um, outside of that, we still have some structures that I want to build. Um, I was experimenting with some designs and stuff over here, but um, overall, I'm pretty happy with the, the way that it turned out. Looking at some of the other uh, places that didn't actually get affected, it does look like the grass will grow over time. And, you know, this is this island wasn't really affected by the block update tick. So outside of that, um, yeah, that's good. I think we accomplished what I wanted to do. So if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.